Last night was WWE's Money in the Bank event. Some people still call it pay-per-view, some people call it... Well, to be honest, it is available on pay-per-view. Some people call them WWE Network events or specials. Whatever it was, Money in the Bank was last night. I, like many people in the UK and abroad, stayed up to watch it, even though I had a couple of things on today. Uh, And, you know, the reason why I did that was because normally Money in the Bank is worth watching, and I think this was another one uh, certainly worth watching. I thought it was a very good pay-per-view overall. Uh, Going through the results, first of all, I didn't see the first uh, first pre-show match. The Golden Truth, Golden Sonar Truth, defeated Breeze Angle, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Um, I've seen, I saw highlights of that on, I think it was the actual pay-per-view itself. I, I, I understand that Tyler Breeze and Fandango were supposed to be sunburnt, but why they had the Jillian Hall-esque uh, bits coming on, on them, I, I really don't know. It was like, obviously bits of makeup that were supposed to be peeling skin. Looked just horrible, in my opinion. Didn't work at all. And it's a shame that Tyler Breeze is in the um, position that he is in right now in WWE. I saw the Lucha Dragons, Kalisto and Sinkara defeat the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray and Devon, in the second uh, and last pre-show match. Uh, again, I was really hoping that the Dudley Boys would win. I would have loved them to come back and made a serious... Well, when they did come back, make a really serious push towards the WWE Tag Team Championships. I mean, are they keeping these guys in reserve for when the roster splits and we'll see how they do the titles? Because I don't think WWE really know exactly what themselves what they're going to do regarding the championships when it comes to uh, post... Uh, brand extension or brand split however you want to call it um, it was an ok match, it was a bit of a th- quite a throwaway match, it lasted about 9 minutes but um, the Lucha Dragons Cleeson and Sankara took the victory the New Day Big E and, King, uh, and Kofi Kingston with Xavier Woods defeated the club, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows Enzo Amore and Big Cass and the Bod Villains, Aiden English and Simon Gotch uh, uh, to kick off the pay-per-view itself in the fatal four-way match for the WWE Tag Team Championships. Um, I thought this was actually a good match. I wasn't sure how they'd play this match. I thought maybe initially it would be an elimination match, so you know, if a member of the team is pinned or submitted, then the whole team would be eliminated Then continue with the other three teams. I thought when they got into the match, it was actually quite good. When they got, they got going, I think what, two thirds of the way into the match uh, kind of quite maybe a little bit more than two thirds into the match, near the end because uh, I've only got, according to Wikipedia only got 11 minutes 43 seconds um, though it felt quite a decent amount of time in the match I have to say uh, I thought the match got going nearer the end than it, the really, I think it should have maybe uh, uh, I was hoping maybe that the New Day would drop the titles, maybe to even the club, Carl Anderson and Gallows. Uh, I would love to see them take the WWE Tag Team Championships. Um, although, you know, it was a good match. Again, New Day took the victory. Are they going for that record uh, of, I would think it's something like 334 days? I think they said it's uh, Paul London and Brian Kendrick that hold that record. But... Uh, certainly, it was. Uh, I think they might possibly are. They might. They might want to rewrite the history. But you know what WWE are like. Sometimes they want to kind of eradicate or eliminate the old record to somebody in the modern era. You know the current WWE roster. I thought it was a good match. A uh, couple of thoughts on it. When Big Cass got taken out of the match right at the, near the end. He went into the corner post with quite some force. Thankfully, he looked at the end of the match when we saw him okay, but uh, it would have been horrible to see uh, Enzo being out with a concussion and then Big Cass being out with a concussion as well. I, I said before, I like the Vlad villains. I would love them to see, to, love to see them and really, really embracing the old British world of sports style. I keep saying it. Uh, I think you know, there there's something different. They need to make sure they stand out again. However, this brand split goes down, maybe we'll not see these tag teams uh, competing for the titles again. Maybe there'll be separate titles. We don't know yet. Uh, but it was a good match. Once it going, I think 
near the end was really when it got going and when we got a lot of action. Again, New Day keeping the titles. Uh, I was a bit frustrated with that. I would like to have seen them drop it, maybe to the club, maybe to Angel and Big Cass. Uh, could have, you know, maybe it's a little bit too soon for them uh, and the Blood Villains, but I would like to have seen Big, uh, the New Day drop the titles. We don't know how they're going to be affected. I think they are, unfortunately. Uh, and I like them. They're a good act. They've turned what was supposed to be a jobber act into a really good act. Uh, I think that they're going for that the record. I think they will claim the record. And they've got a month, I think, maybe in the next uh, a WWE pay-per-view uh, on July 24th, which is Battleground. I think that might be around about the time when they uh, take the record. Uh, Baron Corbin defeated Dolph Ziggler. I thought that was a decent match. Corbin's got still got a lot to learn. This was really quite a, um, a high-level squash match, to be honest. Dolph Ziggler was t- took a lot of beating from Baron Corbin. Ziggler was selling most of the time. Again, this one was, according to Wikipedia, 12 minutes, 23 seconds. Uh, I think, think that's around about right. Um, Corbin, he's got some potential. Like I said, I'm a fan of Baron Corbin. I think he's got a good act. I I don't know what to make. I I mean, I've not been keeping up with every uh, Raw. Well, I watch most of the Raws. uh, Don't watch every SmackDown. This red lighting that they did last night for his entrance, I think was too much like Kane. I think it was just too much of a reminder like Kane. Uh, I thought it it was a bit of a different thing for him, but the red lighting, it just made him look like Kane, uh, to be honest. Uh, again, Baron Corbin, he, he still just, he needs experience, that's the thing. Um, Dolph Ziggler was good, making comebacks, uh, working with Corbin, uh, but uh, to be honest, it wasn't a, a, a match that was, I don't think, essential to the pay-per-view. But again, it, it, Corbin needs that extra push, he needs something, I don't know what, but there's just something that, about Baron Corbin I think needs changed a little bit. Uh, I'm not too sure what it is. Hopefully that's the end of that feud because I think they've been battling the last couple of pay-per-views so uh, maybe Baron can move on and maybe learn from somebody else. Uh, Charlotte and Dana Brooke defeated Natalia and Becky Lynch. Um, again, you I kind of, it was maybe a little bit good that the women's championship was not on the line. So much on the line last night at Money in the Bank. Uh, I thought the work's okay. Dana Brooke, again, still inexperienced on the big stage. She looked good um, on outfit, and I thought, she, again, I'm not entirely, to be honest, I was kind of thinking last night, you know, well, you know, could Dana White be kind of the Arn Anderson to Charlotte's Ric Flair, you know, long fre- long-time friend. I don't know what their personal relationship is, but I thought that, you know, maybe you know, Charlotte could... Uh, you know, have that friend with her continually. I, I, I'm, I'm still not too sure though about. To be honest though, about maybe we should see Charlotte on her own, uh, because Ric Flair didn't have the four horsemen on his side all of the time. Uh, there were periods when he was on his own and matches. Uh, where he's on his own, and I think that when that time comes for Charlotte, when she is, uh, maybe when Dana Brooke is banned from ringside for some reason, or uh, maybe Dana Brooke is, uh, for whatever reason, kept out of the match, I think that will be the match we'll see Charlotte drop the WWE Women's Championship. Uh, Natalia attacked Becky Lynch after the match. Is that Natalia going heel or just being a bit more aggressive? Um, Seems Becky Lynch should not uh, really try and make friends in WWE. I like just to see Natalia being more aggressive. I think she, I think she deserves a women's championship run again. If Natalia can get Charlotte on her own, much like Sting did in the Great American Bash in July 1990. Uh, you know, Ric Flair was on his own, the horsemen were banned from ringside, J.J. Dillon was uh, handcuffed, uh, no it wasn't J.J. Dillon, Ole Anderson was handcuffed to the giant Gonzalez, uh, a.k.a. El, El Gigante. Um, you know, so he was, Ric Flair was on his own, couldn't handle Sting on his own, and I think that might be the case for Natalia. I would like to see her 
get the title, but eventually I think Natalia is seriously going to have to chase Charlotte. I know she's already chasing her, uh, and has chased her for a little while, but I think she seriously need on her own to try and take down Charlotte for a while before finally being able to get that win and get that championship. Paul Cruz defeated Sheamus. Uh, now, Jim Ross had uh, a couple of thoughts on that match, thought that Apollo Cruz was maybe wrestling a bit smaller than he should be. You know, he's a big guy, actually. Uh, apparently, if you meet him, you know, I've seen pictures of people meeting him uh, from his days on Azuha Nation on the independent scene. He's obviously he looks on screen. He's a decently big guy. And uh, you know, Jim Ross was wondering, you know, is he maybe wrestling a bit small, a bit more cruiserweight style? I put that comment on uh, Jim Ross's Facebook page that. Maybe Apollo Cruz, and I think this is what it is. Maybe Apollo Cruz is being the kind of young lion, growing into his paws kind of thing. You know, he's he's got this big body, but he's growing into the you know he's really growing into his body. Uh, you know, he's really growing into his role in WWE. I thought it was a really good match, a really hard hit, kind of a little bit of a different way to do a big man versus big man match. Uh, you know, Sheamus always, when he wants to do good matches, he does good matches. And that was actually a good match. Uh, Apollo Crews getting the victory over Sheamus. Uh, I think that was the right decision. Uh, you know, they should really, if it is the new era, push these new era guys. Uh, and it'll help establish Apollo Crews. Uh, a little bit of uh, a cradle to get the victory over Sheamus, which... It, it gives Apollo Crews the win, but it doesn't really damage Sheamus too much, I don't think, which was a good way to go about it. AJ Styles versus John Cena. Now, that was a really good match, actually. Uh, just over 24 minutes, scored in Wikipedia. Oh, that was a great match. Definitely, you know, some people may not believe it, but it, it genuinely, uh, certainly one of the, some of the younger fans may not really believe it to be true but it is a match that many people have been talking for uh, talking about for about f- nearly 15 years it's a match that a lot of people want to see and I thought it was actually a, a very good match you know uh, a couple of bumps AJ took I was a bit concerned about the the, the uh, overhead bump the uh, over uh, backdrop that uh, AJ Styles took from John Cena uh, if you watch it again AJ didn't land flat he landed kind of almost his, well he did land on his lower back almost kind of his, on his hips on his cocks almost um, I don't know AJ Styles has had back problems I thought it was a really good match AJ Styles took the victory after the club interfered when the referee was down um, you know it seems AJ Styles being positioned as the heel again. It's typical, you know, WWE wanting to stick to their guns um, booking. They want to have John Cena as you know our hero and our you know, our guy kind of thing. You know, he's you know hustle, loyalty, respect. Uh, the kids think a lot of him. So obviously WWE and he sells a hell of a lot of merchandise. So WWE want him to remain. As a as a good guy, as a baby face, which uh, kind of, I mean, the crowd, I think, were a little bit split in this one. I think some of them were going for AJ Styles, uh, obviously some of them were going for John Cena. I think towards the end of the match, I think a lot of them were booing AJ Styles or at least jeering him. I think AJ Styles picking up the victory was the great deci- was a gr- the best decision. Uh, he needed the win. Last couple of pay per views where he faced Roman Reigns and others, he hasn't had the victory. Uh, you know, Chris Jericho as well. The last, you know, the first two feuds he comes in WWE with great matches. He lost. The you know AJ Styles picking up the victory in this one was completely the right decision in my opinion. He was the one that needed the win. It didn't hurt John Cena. As we saw in the video package, he's a 15-time world champion. AJ Styles picking up the victory was the right thing. A lot of people thought maybe we'd see Finn Balor debut on Money in the Bank. That was one of the rumours going around. He didn't appear in any way, shape or form. I would love to see AJ Styles versus Finn Balor 
on WWE programming, obviously it's going to have to be a pay-per-view or a network special. It has to be. They can't have it on a Raw or a SmackDown. It has to be on a pay-per-view like Battleground or SummerSlam, maybe. Uh, I don't know what the plan... We don't know what the plans exactly are for Finn Balor at this time. I thought maybe he would jump up. Uh, Who knows? Monday Night Raw is tonight. Maybe he'll have seen what the club... It has done apparently to uh, to AJ Styles, uh, uh, to John Cena even. Uh, maybe he'll apparently have had enough of it and make the jump to Rock. Maybe he's there. I, I don't think he will. He is. I don't think it's quite timing for uh, WWE to bring him up. I think they'll have him against Nakamura, which seems to be I haven't watched lo- uh, last week's uh, or look at this current week's NXT yet. I haven't had the chance to sit down and watch that. Uh, program yet. Uh, that looks like the direction they're heading. Finn Balor versus Nakamura. Maybe then, after that match, we'll see Naka, uh, We'll see Finn Balor uh, go up to the main roster. I do. Li- I would like to see Finn Balor move up to the main roster sooner rather than later. Uh, and it would be a great match to see AJ Styles versus uh, Finn Balor, especially have the history of the club involved. Uh, in that feud. So we come now um, to the Money in the Bank match. What a match that was. That was a, a, a quite a decent match. Uh, Dean Ambrose defeating Alberto Del Rio, Cesaro, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, some really good moments in this match. Uh, you know, I thought the, uh, you know, Kevin Owens, I, thought, uh, I have to say, I did think Kevin Owens cannonballing and um, I think it was uh, Cesaro, both doing the, uh, you know, the the el- and Cesaro doing the elbow to all uh, to three other opponents were there were a little bit of a uh, kind of spot in the match. It was a bit of an obvious spot in the match. There was a couple of them like that. I thought the having all six men on the ladder was a good sight. I, I saw, obviously, Alberto Del Rio came crashing down. He tried to almost... I don't know what he did. He had both feet on the top rope uh, and then seemed to just crash down uh, inside the ring. Uh, but that was the, when the ladder was pushed over and Cesaro landed uh, on the top rope as well, on, on the uh, another on the, on the, uh, the side of the ring. He fell on... Uh, kind of, it was kind of a when we saw it, it was a kind of a V shape. So Alberto landed as I was looking at it on the right, and Cesaro landed on the left. Uh, you know, uh, he landed uh, his nether regions on the top rope. Uh, Dean Ambrose winning it again. It would, was it maybe a little bit obvious? Uh, I I think it was possible, possibly a little bit obvious. I mean, if there was another prize on the line for this one. I don't think that I, c- I could really complain um, that somebody other than Dean Ambrose would have taken the victory, but it was the Money in the Bank uh, contract championship match, uh, con- uh, W World Heavyweight Championship match uh, contract that was on line. Uh, well, maybe it was a little bit too obvious the storyline that WWE went down. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Rusev with Lana defeated Titus O'Neil. To be honest, I knew Titus never really had the chance to win this title. I thought it was a good adage of having Titus O'Neil's uh, kids at ringside. I thought that was a nice touch. Obviously, it's father. It was Father's Day um, yesterday. Uh, one of the few holidays that's actually the same uh, in the UK and the US. But. Uh, uh, you know, I, I thought it was a good touch. I think Titus O'Neil was never going to get the title. It really was, and there was no way. Uh, I hope Rusev continues to dominate with the United States Championship. Hope he holds it for quite some time. I, I really don't think that John Cena uh, or some of that elk should go after him. Uh, there's no really, not really anybody. I, I don't think overall would really benefit from um, taking the title off of Rusev right now. It's a bit difficult when I look down the road and see, okay, after Rusev's had a good lengthy few, several month run with that title, who could take it off him? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Seth Rollins defeated Roman Reigns. Uh, I would have liked to have seen, I mean, some of the match had a bit more, a bit too much impact, impactful moves. 
uh, you know, Roman Reigns hitting the Superman punch about three times and hitting that barricade as well. Um, I would, I kind of would like to have seen them scale it back a little bit, but then again, you are talking, uh, you know, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, you're talking about two, again, to use the, you know, what, the analogy that I talked about Apollo Crews. It's two young lines, two young guys. If they're gonna, if there's gonna be a match, uh, that you're gonna hit everything. You're gonna really have a big physical fight. It's for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and it's two young guys like that who can actually take the punishment. Uh, it was a really good match. I would have liked to see Seth Rollins maybe had to chase uh, Roman Reigns a little bit more for the title. It doesn't accomplish much in my view that. Seth Rollins comes back and he instantly wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship from Roman Reigns. I I, I felt even over 26 minutes of Conor McAfee, it was a really good match uh, where you know Seth Rollins did a, quite a good, a really good counter when Roman Reigns was coming in for I think it was the spear and he turned it into the pedigree kind of uh, had one arm up. Uh, I thought you know, Seth Rollins would probably benefited from a chase maybe with you know maybe the with uh, what Dean Ambrose did was uh, with uh, his coming down cashing in the contract right there and then and defeating Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship maybe that was the plan so they maybe thought okay well you know what it won't hurt Seth Rollins to now be a two time WWE World Heavyweight Champion, so we'll give him the title because we know Dean, we're giving it to Dean tonight. So we'll let Seth Rollins win the title, and maybe Dean Ambrose beating Seth Rollins for the title instead of Roman Reigns will set up a Dean Ambrose Roman Reigns feud um, because I don't think those guys are those guys haven't really feuded. Uh, I thought it was worked well because when the when uh, the Shield broke up and we saw Seth versus uh, Dean. I said that we'd see Roman versus Seth sometime in the near future because Roman Reigns, for whatever reason, just seemed to ignore the fact that it was Seth Rollins that took apart the shield and moved on to other feuds and let Dean Ambrose really take on Seth Rollins and um, really let Dean Ambrose... Uh, work out his frustrations on Seth Rollins, so we got that feud in. Obviously, some point in the future, we'll get a heated feud, maybe very soon, between Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, uh, and perhaps over the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Dean Ambrose winning the the uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship last night. My opinion on that, well, you know, I don't know I had a couple of different thoughts, you know, is this maybe a bit obvious booking? We heard Dean Ambrose say before uh, that if he won Money in the Bank, he would cash it in that very same night, which he did. Was it a little bit obvious in the booking? Maybe, you know, I I thought, you know, when I was watching it, when Dean Ambrose took the Money in the Bank contract, I thought, we're going to see him cash it in tonight. I really do believe what he said on Raw... So I think we're going to see Dean Ambrose cash it in uh, on uh, Roman Reigns tonight. We're going to see Dean Ambrose possibly walk out as WWE World Heavyweight Champion, which is what happened. Uh, maybe it was a little bit obvious. Maybe it was. Maybe they could have waited a little bit with Dean Ambrose. Uh, you know, maybe Dean could have named the place and the time and the type of match. Maybe, um, but you know. Well, you know, definitely Dean deserves it. I don't, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve now to be WWE World Heavyweight Champion because he does. He's a great performer, uh, very much in the Rowdy Roddy Piper, Terry Funk kind of mode, and uh, that kind of the, obviously the lun- kind of lunatic fringe type of you know really aggressive and mentally out there. Thinking out of the box a little bit, guy. I think he's he, he's got it. He, he's good uh, heavyweight champion. Maybe I would like to have seen somebody else. I know Kevin Owens on WWE. dot com with the interview with Tom Phillips uh, declared his intention to go for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, I would like to. You know, 
again, you know, looking at this, was it a little bit too obvious? You know, was it kind of pulling the rug out of uh, the rug, pulling the rug under out from under some of the guys like Cesaro and Kevin Owens who might have benefited from a win, uh, might have benefited from you know, from actually having that device to 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 propel themselves up the ladder in WWE. Yeah, maybe I would have liked to see. You know, those guys take a step forward, like Cesaro's and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn's, you know, take a step up and take a step maybe into uh, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship contendership. You know, that kind of picture. They want, you know, I would like to see a guy like Cesaro or Kevin Owens really start to challenge for the WWE Championship. Maybe it was a little bit of a uh, uh, kind of... I, I don't know whether it would be a wasted opportunity, maybe it was, you know, a kind of, almost like an old independent uh, wrestling show, that you know, it was a kind of a one night story, you know, it was a you know, one night all encompassing story, we saw the start of the story, we saw the end of the story, maybe it was a little bit like that, but, um, you know, I, I, I'd be interested to see how we see it. You know, see whether we see Seth Rollins immediately jump back into the title picture and try and hunt down Dean Ambrose. Whether we see Seth Ro- uh, Ro- Roman Reigns go for the WWE World Championship. Uh, I- I'm not sure how they're going to do it. We'll all see that tonight on Monday Night Raw to see who's actually going to be uh, the ones that go after. And will we see Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns uh, kind of veer off into a feud between the two of them and maybe we'll see the likes of Kevin Owens or Cesaro go up and challenge for the WWE Championship and will this be a placeholder? Will this, whoever's going to be at Battleground challenging Dean Ambrose, who are assuming that Dean Ambrose is still the champion uh, at Battleground if, you know, if we see somebody at Battleground vying for the championship, are they going to be a serious contender or are they just going to be a placeholder until we know exactly what is happening uh, when it comes to this uh, brand extension, brand split, however they want to call it. Uh, but overall, I thought Money in the Bank was a really good event. I thought it was good. Uh, some great, some good matches. Um, like I said, I think the, the Tag Team Championship match got better uh, near the end. Um... I think AJ Styles vs John Cena was a good match. Um, you know, I'd like to see them go at it again. I think AJ again AJ Styles taking the victory. Some some good victories by guys who needed it, like Baron Corbin, Apollo Cruz, AJ Styles, obviously Dean Ambrose, uh, and Rusev, who, again, who I think should dominate the United States uh, Championship scene for the next several months. I thought it was a good. It didn't really ill at the pay per view. Didn't really elevate anybody to the degree which I thought it might or it should but again with this brand split this brand extension maybe the guys will be able to elevate themselves uh, over the next few months uh, because really whatever happens now is again it's a placeholder uh, over the next four weeks until we see the brand split uh, we will not really see, I mean Okay, we know now that Dean Ambrose is WWE World Heavyweight Champion, but to be honest, I don't think we'll really see the di- true direction of WWE until we see the brand split happen, till we see the makeup, the structure of the brand split, and then, and only then, I think we'll see uh, the direction that WWE is going when it comes to championships and their contenders, uh, their their who's challenging for them. Uh, I, I think it could be good. I think a couple of... You know, w, you know, every time we think WWE is getting really stale, uh, after a while, we think, oh my God, it's really, really stale. WWE changes, which is one of the great things about the company uh, over the years. When it gets really, really stale, it seems to change. And I think we can take away from money in the bank the fact that there are new guys in the company put on some good performances, there were some good matches, uh, and I think we could be in for uh, 
a worthwhile summer when it comes to watching WWE, uh, uh, WWE programming, WWE events. Uh, I honestly think that if we get some decent matches over the summer like we did last night, WWE could be in for a good run-up to SummerSlam. <laughs> 